Hello, everybody, and welcome to What's Next, our podcast and blog series about startups and innovation. My name is Giovanni Vaccari. I am head of product here at Startup Bootcamp. And today we will be interviewing our super mentor and expert, Kasia Toshko. Kasia is Chief Communications at Privimax. They are developing privacy by design collaboration software for remote and hybrid teams. Kasia, nice having you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me, Gio. It's lovely to meet you. It's lovely to see you again. Now, uh, digitally, not at our office. Where are you calling from? I'm actually calling you from Torun. It's the center of Poland, in the heart of Poland, and the city where Copernicus was born. So that's what everybody should know. <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's a, yeah, that's a strong recommendation. If, you, uh, if you're ever in Poland, please go, of course, to Gdańsk and Krakow, but don't forget about Torun because it's one of the most beautiful spots around here. Lovely. I'm dialing from my hometown. Just kidding. That's not my hometown at all. Uh, I'm dialing from home, however, Utrecht, uh, the cooler version of Amsterdam. I want to, I want to brand Utrecht like that. And if you're branding, I'm, I'm also br adding some city branding to it. Kasia, I'm really excited to talk to you. And I want first for the people that don't know you, what, tell me a little bit about yourself and your professional journey. Of course, uh, I would love that. I'm actually working with uh, Privamex team right now. We're developing this uh, online collaboration software that is privacy oriented. But my professional journey started, uh, well, I have a very diverse background, I must say, but, but this, this is like uh, my superpower, I think. Uh, I started as an art student. I'm also a philologist. I speak fluent Portuguese, although not that fluent anymore. But then my professional journey started uh, mostly in public relations and marketing. I used to work with uh, contemporary art galleries, cultural institutions, working and crafting their internal and external communication strategies. Uh, then I started working with creative entrepreneurs, moved into startups. Uh, I even had this incident of uh, being a coach and a trainer within social media tactics. But I fell out of love with the social media after Cambridge Analytica and uh, turned into privacy, got really deep into privacy oriented solutions and started, you know, looking uh, for my way there. And then I was lucky enough to meet Privamex team and I'm super happy to, you know, be a part of their journey. We're trying to make the future of work a little bit better for different kind of teams all around the world. And you're also a mentor now, right? At Startup Bootcamp. And yes, and that's very exciting. Yeah, why? <laughs> Because the the part that I liked mostly about my work, uh, working with, you know, different groups, even with artists, curators back in the past was actually this process of, you know, exchanging opinions and working together during workshops, uh, discussing things. And I love the fact that right now I'm able to do it with the most innovative um, people that are working on wonderful solutions. I'm able to learn so much, not only about technologies, but about different ways people work, communicate together. And I'm super happy, you know, to offer some of my professional expertise uh, concerning communication, but also, you know, to learn from them. Uh, it's a win-win situation for me. So uh, this mind exchange is a really strong asset of being the mentor. I'm super happy and thankful for the startup would come to invite me, you know, aboard this wonderful journey. It is our pleasure. You're talking a lot about collaboration. And in my quick intro, we talked about Privamax's privacy by design collaboration software. Mm -hmm. What does it actually mean? Okay, bring <laughs> it to us. Yeah, of course, I will break it down to you. So collaboration softwares are the tools that you have been using for the past, mm, I don't know, many, many months uh, during home office hours and this very uh, I think challenging times during the lockdowns and the COVID regulations that uh, hit us hard wherever you work, I guess. So we all had to switch online. We all started using different tools. Some of them were designed for work, but some weren't. And that's uh, like a crucial problem for me. So people started using communication platforms such as, I don't know, WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger to stay on top of things and communicate on a daily basis because we were not able to meet, meet each other at the office space anymore. And uh, of course, some of us started experiencing with Zoom and I don't know, switch to Microsoft Teams or, or Google tools. And um, some teams were also forced to start using 
very elaborate, sophisticated tools that were designed for uh, internal communication for different kinds of teams. So when I'm speaking about collaboration software, I mean all the tools that I mentioned, but Privamix is, uh, has a different approach to the idea of teamwork. So we really think that teamwork should be, um, should be private and digital workspaces that are meant and designed for people to come together, work on ideas, uh, challenge themselves, have discussions, create files, exchange opinions. They should also be a place that is kept private, that is secured, protected, taken care of in terms of data protection. And uh, for the past two and a half years, we have been developing um, such software that is an open source solution. So you can actually take a look at how it was made and written, take a look at the code itself. But we also offer a cloud-based service. So any type of team that is working on a daily basis using their, wherever they work, it's like a work from anywhere solution. Wherever you work, you can uh, use Privamex with your team, create a digital workspace that is called a team server, invite your team over and, you know, be able to use an all-in-one solution. So instead of switching from, you know, uh, between five different tools and solutions, one for video conferencing and the other one for, I don't know, task management, storing files, uh, crafting files and preparing documents. You have an all-in-one thing that has it all inside one digital workspace. Plus, it's all end-to-end -end encrypted, so the data is secure. You have full control of what's going on with your data. You know the location, the exact geographical location of the server that you're using, and uh, you can just take full control of it. Um, we also, of course, came up with many original and very, uh, I think, creative features for different kind of teams, because we strongly believe that with so many tools out there for uh, online collaboration, uh, there are also many methodologies and even like uh, very strict regulation in terms of how you work. And we think that teams are so flexible and diverse, it should be offered a tool that is really agile and that suits you know many team members with different technological backgrounds, with different, I don't know, entry level point in terms of technological assets. So uh, we try to make it as universal and flexible as it gets. We came up with some really neat ideas for that. So that's like a brief story of what Privamix uh, is all about. But of course, it's just the beginning of our journey and we are really eager to see, you know, many teams around the world trying it out and giving us feedback. But you also mentioned, which I find very interesting, the data mm -hmm. remains private, but also not just the data of your startup, but the data of what you you talk about and as a person, because you're still a person when you're at work and your data should still be secured. And doesn't matter which element you're, you're, you're existing in. So really cool, really cool. I just wanted to, to note that I, I really like that, that aspect. And talking about startups and privacy can become a challenge because first, do you think that startups are paying enough, enough attention to privacy and is that is there an educational aspect to it of teaching startups first what privacy means to them? Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of educating people about digital privacy is so essential to me. I think it, this education should be starting when you're born, actually, when you start using devices and technology and you just walk into the Internet and you start, you know, choosing stuff and experimenting with different platforms. But of course, we're not living in the ideal world. So maybe someday this uh, cyber education will be a part of the you know, curriculum in every school, in every piece of the world. But talking about startups, I'm aware that start right now I'm working with startups. I have been working with startups before. I know they have so many challenges in terms of uh, getting funds, getting structures, getting ideas, like crafting different pieces of their business uh, development strategy. And of course, teamwork is one of them. Uh, but I think startups deserve to have a choice. Like uh, they deserve to know and be educated that there are alternatives out there, alternatives to big tech, alternatives to, you know, the first go-to solutions that they tend to choose. Because I, you know, during my time at Privamex, but also before, I have been talking to many startups and asking them during technological conferences, such as the Next Web or InfoShare. I'm also going for the Web Summit soon. And I always ask a question, you know, to the startups. What kind of tools do you use? What's your ecosystem, you know, for work? And the answers I get most is that it's a mixture uh, of different, you know, chat apps. Some of them were never meant for work and they are only for private purposes, but I will not say which of them are. 
Uh, and of course, some you know storage um, storage space um, solutions. Some solutions that are working in the browser are free, uh, you know, are flexible, are usually mobile, but are not really offering any type of sophisticated privacy policy standards. And I am aware that you know privacy is not the first problem on your mind when you're like trying to enter the world of business and getting you know investors to talk to you. But some startups working with sensitive data or around cybersecurity or just working with GDPR sensitive, uh, you know, problems and questions inside the, the, the world of business are really aware of the fact that they should keep the GDPR compliance. They should be aware of the fact that somebody, actually some third party companies, if they are using those free, uh, you know, web browser based tools, are having the access are, to their data, like can actually be processing it, whether it's, I don't know, Google or any kind of, you know, big tech company. The sad truth is that, you know, all the data, this very precious, uh, uh, this very precious innovation, all your ideas, talks and files, if you store them in a place that is free and that is for everybody to, you know, walk into and look around. It is being processed and analyzed, but different kind of algorithms and AI and machine learning, you know, um, technologies. So uh, startups should be aware of that, of course. And it's my role to also, uh, you know, talk to them and then educate myself about how they are approaching teamwork, but also, you know, to, to tell them that there are other ways that they deserve to have the choice. because. If I'm talking to those big minds and big thinkers, people with this wonderful uh, imagination, you know, changing the world uh, piece by piece and saving it, you know, on a large scale, you know, developing solutions that are making the world a better place. Uh, I think that these people should, they deserve to have this opportunity to, 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 to choose the tools that are a good alternative that are, you know, taking care of their data, helping them uh, in organizing and crafting their internal communication, but also giving them the right to protect it, to take full control of it. So, but that that's an interesting choice of words, <laughs> that the right yeah. to protect it, and yeah. and that that brings me to another thought, which is to what extent then these privacy laws and the regulations. They, they, I mean, we need them. Let's be honest. We can't let big data regulate itself. Um, sorry, big, big, big tech regulate itself. But at, at which point do they actually hinder and at which point do they help? Like when we're talking about regulation. Of course. And that's a question that I get a lot during tech events and conferences and discussions because, um, Many people believe that developing artificial intelligence and using machine learning to solve, you know, global problems, using automizations to uh, make our life easier is actually the way that technology should evolve. But my question is, uh, should the motto of innovation be move fast and break things? You know, a company that uses this motto, they are like in deep trouble right now. Or should we be really thinking about, you know, opening <laughs> this discussion about how technology should be developing for all of us. Because right now this discussion about uh, how AI should be, uh, you know, evolving is happening somewhere in the Silicon Valley behind closed doors and we actually have no access to it. There was a great presentation at the next web conference by Mo Gaudat, uh, a guy from Google. He recently published a book, um, Scary and Smart, and it's both scary and smart because it tells the story of how uh, not inclusive, you know, these discussions are basically. So I think that um, there is this big movement right now um, of, you know, owning your data and thinking about different models within developing technology of really giving the people the rights to monetize their data and protect it and to be able to have this choice. And this is for me, like the biggest answer to your question, like privacy is a human right. It's actually written in, deeply within the GDPR law. It's uh, actually one of the rules that we should be treating like, yeah, like a human right. So this is my departure point uh, for, you know, the discussion about how the technology should be evolving right now. If you want your data to be, you know, open to different sorts of algorithms and technologies, Okay, that's your right to decide that. But we shouldn't base on the model that is working right now. People are really using different tools without even having uh, the clearest idea 
what's happening to it later. Or that, you know, yes, it is, it is transparent. It's all in our terms and conditions. Like, okay, yeah, it's a 50 page doc says like, nobody's going to go through and read it. And I think it should be clearer for the user. And, and that yeah. it, it, it's a, an active choice. I think Apple does actually quite a good job at that. I have to be honest with the constant, you know, giving permissions. And now when you download an app, you can clearly see what data they connect to you, what data they don't connect to you, but how long it took. And that's one ecosystem. And how many battles, how many discussions, how many, I don't know, discussions of, you know, prominent people from the Silicon Valley with the American Congress, how many whistleblowers, this is like what it took, uh, because, you know, the laws and regulations in the world right now are so behind the technological landscape. And we are talking to each other from Europe, like you're talking from Utrecht, I'm talking to you from Poland. We are both uh, like part of the European Union. We're so lucky to have GDPR. I mean, when it came into reality, people were so hesitant and so... It was really a big like, headache, let's be honest. It was a big headache for everybody, but a, a good one. Yeah, but it turns out it's a good one because it really gives us the possibility to, I don't know, uh, own our data in a way. Like, uh, I don't know, people from the United States should be uh, like fighting for the same level of regulations. Like Brazil accepted the, the, the new um, uh, GDPR policy recently. Many countries all around the world are, you know, embracing the idea of giving the people the right to own their data, to make it a part of the, you know, human rights Thing. So I think it's a, it's a huge discussion and it should be held with open door and it should be yes. inclusive and all should be part of it. But also there should be other options. And that's, that's a brilliant thing you said that because now we all experience the shortage of Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, the Facebook servers, right? Let's talk about that. Yeah. And for an afternoon, we couldn't talk to each other anymore. We couldn't communicate with our loved ones. We couldn't do the things we love doing the most. Yeah, and think about how many businesses were ruined uh, because of the ad model, like how many, you know, different e-commerce entities were suffering from every hour that the Facebook was down. Yeah, but so, also how interesting it is that they own every single way that we communicate. And, and, and that's the, the problem right now is we're not even given an alternative. And when we are, it's quickly bought. So that's where I, I, I think that the regulation can also step in. But enough about regulation. I wanted to ask you, uh, data privacy in the next five years, where do you hope it's lending? I, I am hoping. Uh, I am hoping for different things. In, we're not going to talk about regulations like and laws and different, because the, the, the conversation would get political pretty soon. But like my idealistic hope is that the conversation that we're having right now about privacy in terms of social media, in terms of our private conduct online, educating our kids and, you know, loved ones about fake news and information bubbles and uh, what's happening with the algorithms and the, the big, you know, the big tech uh, policies. I hope that people are going to move this conversation also into the digital workspace. So people are going to understand that, you know, the things that you work together on when you're a team, you know, your, you know, ideas, conversations, the files, the Excel sheets, the plans, the Kanban boards, it should also be protected. It shouldn't be let out there. Uh, because I, I can see that the conversation, you know, around social media is pretty strong right now. And you can also see it uh, when you look at Facebook stocks, <laughs> but I hope that this conversation <laughs> I hope this conversation moves towards the business environments as well. Uh, and the people are going to start thinking not only about GDPR compliance, but also about, you know, this, yeah, this fact that this is my innovation. This is my intellectual property. I want to like have control over it. I'm not going to feed that kind of algorithm with it because I want to be, I, I want to own it like the real way. So, and my other hope is that, um, What's happening in the future is that we put a lot of effort into creating this model of digital intelligence. Uh, so you have IQ, but you have also this DQ. Uh, I hope that the cyber education uh, is going to be a part of the curriculum and people will start educating themselves, uh, not only about how social media works and algorithm works, but about what kind of opportunities they have, uh, 
what kind of rights they have, what kind of solutions, alternatives there are on the market, and they won't rely on the automatisms and, you know, choosing the, the easiest way, but will also start, you know, putting a little bit more effort into, you know, finding and crafting these solutions that work better in terms of data privacy. And I also hope that the, yeah, people are going to be still jealous about the GDPR that is working within the European Union and will start introducing it to, to other markets. I hope that, you know, companies will start hiring DPOs like everywhere. And it's going to be like a part of the reality. And when, I, when it comes to a tech conference, it's not only going to be, uh, you know, a conversation about values and interesting, you know, missions and visions, but it's going to be a part of the business world. Okay. I want to own my da data with my team because we're working on this amazing patent right now. Like, show me the alternative that is privacy oriented that I can actually trust because it's all about trust. Yeah. I hope that, you know, a part of, you know, experiencing the internet is also going to be trust. Uh, and it's based on, of course, on the digital intelligence and education. So that's my, you know, it's quite idealistic, but let's hope that, that, that that's right. why it's called hope. <laughs> uh, my, my other question to you would be, um, how can startups now start taking better care of their data and their privacy? I think the first step would be when you're thinking about choosing tools for your team to work on uh, any type of, so of tools, the tools that we're using right now, you know, the tools for, for, for video conferencing, for chats, for storing your files, but also for, you know, creating your files, for putting, managing, uh, orchestrating your tasks. Uh, start thinking about all-in-one solutions because you can control them better. Right now, as I have mentioned before, most startups use this, you know, five different apps and they integrate them together. They log into five different places in the web browser on a daily basis and it costs them a lot of time, a lot of focus. It causes a lot of out. money as well, right? For all these subscriptions. Because it seems free and so cheap when you start on the free trial or on the free plan for startups. But then when you're scaling up, you're just, you know, adding new elements. You have to, you know, um, upscale and, and buy new plans. So, you know, think uh, reasonably and try to choose all in one solutions that are scalable, that are flexible, that will feed your growing needs, your growing teams as well. So you can build up on your, you know, communication model. And also think about, you know, the, also think about <laughs> this equilibrium between private life and professional life as well, because it's so important. When you're choosing an all-in-one tool, you can log off with one button. You don't get Slack notifications in the middle of the night. It's really will be working for you. I know it's the hustle movement right now. We're all into working 16 hours a day, but like, this is my personal tip for teams, apart from, you know, all in one solutions being the thing that will keep you sane and focused and will like help you in terms of cyber security, because you don't use like five different passwords and logins that nobody's controlling by the way, because like, show me the team le leader that has all this logins and passwords to different places around the web browser of every team user. There's no such one, maybe a hero. If you are the hero, please write to me, <laughs> find me on uh, LinkedIn. But anyways, um, apart from the cybersecurity thing, which was a, by the way, major issue during the last months, uh, you know, the, the, the 2020 and 2021 were called by the cybersecurity professionals uh, as a true cyber pandemics. Like the number of phishing uh, attacks, the cloud-based, uh, you know, data leaks, uh, people, people being um, subjected to different kind of cyber issues uh, while using, yeah, different remote work tools. Uh, it was like 80% more than the normal. Whoa. So don't be so, yeah. So the statistics are like, and it's not about, you know, big corporations or big uh, enterprises. It's also about, you know, middle and little teams, little companies struggling yeah. on a basis. They were also, you know, subjected to a lot of trouble in terms of the cyber pandemic. So think wise and think about, uh, but thinking wise, protect. that's my question to you. Yeah. What, what are key indicators, for example, end-to-end -end encryption, like uh, not to name names, but we know that Slack doesn't have yeah. that, right? Slack well, is not end-to-end -end that... encrypted. So yeah, and so are not, you know, different tools and toys that you're working with within the browser. I but mean, what the are browser... good signs, like the end-to-end -end encryption? What else? 
Yeah, so we have a desktop application. Always go for the desktop application. I also mentioned all-in-one tools. That's a good solution because you can control the people within and you can like, you know, switch smoothly from one place to the other and you can have it all in one place. You don't have it, you get the big picture. But in terms of, yeah, securing your data and uh, choosing the privacy-oriented tools, it is end-to-end -end encryption. It's also the ability to actually know where your data is located. So is it within the European Union or is it in China, Russia? Is it in the United States? Or is it nowhere to be found? Because you cannot find it on the you know, privacy policy of the certain company. So it takes a, a little moment, you know, to educate yourself and to actually check the solution that you were thinking about. But think about, yeah, uh, think about that sort of um, element. Also, end-to-end -end encryption. You know, WhatsApp was supposed to be end-to-end -end encrypted, but is it end-to-end encrypted? -end what kind of data is encrypted? Like, is it encrypted at all times? Is it encrypted uh, um, in, in transfer? Some, you know, some apps are supposed to be super safe and secure, but there's actually an easy way for any type of admin within a team server, within a server infrastructure, then it can actually walk into the server and read your data without uh, any type of effort. So the, we, what we do is actually use zero knowledge servers and end-to-end -end encryption at all times so that the only people that can read your data on the desktop application of the Privimix apps are actually the team members. They, they are the only people who have the keys to use the encrypted files to see, you know, the content of um, of your team's digital workspace. So always go, always make the efforts to, I think, uh, check the things that you're gonna be working with, especially if you're working with super, you know, innovative ideas and intellectual property and sensitive data. This is like my tip of the day. Also, you know, if work is your life, you might as well protect that element as well, right? The amount of conversations we have amongst ourselves, amongst team team members, um, if yeah, if that's the new the new normal, then that normal should be protected as well, and your privacy in that element should also be protected. Kasha, it was a pleasure talking to you. It was. It was a pleasure to you, Gio. Thank you for these great questions. Oh, thank you, and it was very very informative. If people want to find you, where can they find you? <laughs> Find me on LinkedIn, but first go to my company's website, privemex.com and uh, learn and educate yourself about what we're doing and how we, you know, develop this uh, tool and also develop our values and missions and visions about, you know, teams working together in a more, more private model. I will also be around to be found uh, during the next web summit. So pretty soon in Lisbon, if you're there, part of the startup community, we will also be exhibiting uh, within the alpha program. So I will be there at, you know, the startup booth as well, uh, ready to join any type of conversation, but also like really let's communicate, let's meet. Uh, so I'm open to any type of ideas, feedback. I'm also a contributor on our company's blog. So you can like read more stories by me concerning uh, protecting intellectual property within startups. And you ha if you have any type of ideas uh, or questions to me, uh, just hit me. And I'm also, I also wanted to thank you, Gio, for inviting me to be a part of this journey. And we are so super proud to be a partner of the Startup Bootcamp. Like personally, I'm, I think that, you know, being a part of this network is also, like a big uh, step for us in terms of creating this educational journey for startups. So I'm, we're, we're super proud to be a part of your partner, uh, as proud as I am being the mentor for Startup Bootcamps as well. So thanks. Thank you for inviting me on board. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that was What's Next. You can follow us everywhere great podcasts are found and also hear more about us on Instagram. Yes, we're also on Instagram at Startup Bootcamp. That is at Startup Bootcamp on Instagram. Thank you, and I will see you on the next episode.